Well, welcome to the man cave. There's Deacon. Hi, Deacon. What do you think? This way. Okay, so uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of swapping. So this KTM stands for Conchacks Two Motorcycles. So when we were in um, Moab, Ron and I, because I broke a lever, we bought these uh, KTM Power Parts um, Bark Busters and uh, this little bracket here. It comes in three three parts. This guy's about twenty nine dollars. This part's about twenty four dollars. The debris shield. And then the bracket is the most expensive thing. It was $50. Now the problem with this guy is that um, there's not enough room for all the, the cables and everything on here. And so you can't rotate the bark buster down far enough to get the, the handle in the middle. And this is also, by the way, made by Enduro Engineering, MSR, Acherbis, all rebrand this stuff. Um, so then... And if you remember the other video when we were in Moab, um, Ron bought an orange set of these debris shields. Well, after you look at mine, it bugged him enough, he really wanted to go to black. So I told him I would buy black ones and send them off to uh, Illinois if he goes ahead and sends me his. So he did. So now the only thing I needed to do was buy the metal bars. And because I, I said I could put them on my 500, see? Now, when I, I had actually broke one of these guys by pulling on it this way to lift the bike up, and it broke right here. So I'm not, they're not as trustworthy as you'd like them. And you'll notice that this is the actual color it's supposed to be, right? And then it's got this pinkish orange look to it. Not very good. So I'm gonna put bark busters in this, and what I'm gonna do, um, replace the, the mounting bracket from the uh, the 690 and put it over in the 500. Now I just got to figure out what I did with the mounting brackets. And the dog doesn't like thunder, so he's moving inside. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's not worry, Deacon. So he's right here. Deacon, you okay? Where are you going, Deacon? There he goes. He's running inside. So we'll just move inside. Everything's getting wet. I really wanted to work outside. Mm. All right, should that give me enough room, I think, to work on? So my goal is not only to uh, put the bark busters on, but also to add a camera mount like I did here. See on the end. And uh, so I can pivot that, that around, look forward, look at my posse behind me, look at my posse in front of me, look at me and the dog. Works really good. Let's go ahead and shut the door. Now, for the 690, you... Um, when you go into the KTM dealer, you do not want to buy the or order the off the KTM Power Parts manual these type brackets. So what you want is the Sycra. Now there's another KTM um, um, bracket that is um, that is packaged with a KTM. Uh, styling or everything. That whole set is like $179, but it uses these. So if you're just going to buy the whole thing, you might want to look at those. But if you don't only want to spend about 100 bucks, then um, you might want to go this route. So what we're going to do is real quick, we're going to take these guys off that bracket and replace them with this one, these Cycras. Which has double packages on it for some reason. 
That's interesting. Now the thing I like about the psycher is that Ron had discovered um, it actually tells you the T2 and it's the right hand side and this one says T2 and on the where's the left hand side? Maybe there's only a right hand side. Oh well, so I guess as long as they told you right hand side you're good to go. So let me get the proper tool. Looks like a half inch or a 13 millimeter is perfect for this job. Now the um, and you'll see here that part of that deal is um, covered here. So let me. So we got the orange ones that run was jealous of my black and orange ones because I was the first one on the scene in the motorcycle store and I took the black and orange ones off and then he got stuck with the orange and black ones so I think those look great on the 500 oh and uh, by the way there's the part numbers on hand guards. Okay, here's a KTM Power Parts Off-Road 2015 catalog, Power Parts. And um, on this page shows you the um, the guards that we're putting on and, and it should be this part number here this is the bracket that we're putting on the 500. It works fine, but it does not does not work very good for the uh, 690. Um, and this is the one I've got on the 690. The deflectors, these are the orange ones I'm going to put on the 500. And um, uh, over here, you'll see on this guard, it's really quite spiffy, but I think this is like 179 dollars. And um, but you'll notice that it's got the 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 Cycra, uh, mounts, but they're only these are all packaged with the whole kit and caboodle. Um, but since I have separate orange things here, the deflectors and the mounts, I really had to go and, and buy these bars. So now both of my bikes are gonna both be using this type of. Um, uh, guard system. The catalog is long, by the way, um, for the 690, because the bars that are on the, they both say uh, Renthal bars, but we don't have Renthal bars. We got Nikki. Oh, these are all soggy now. Also, what I'm trying to do is get this Allen wrench out of here. The package is all wet, so it's never going to go be able to go back to the store. There we go. Well, can't have enough five millimeter Allens in your toolbox, I guess. My first task is I want to get rid of these. Get rid of the existing ones. I just re If we're lucky, everything's going to fall into place. Hear that thunder out there? Oops. Try this. I haven't tried that before. Hey, I like that. That's kind of stuck on the handlebar. So my uh, Coleman Conquest camera has 
a little tripod on it. And that's also the camera that would fit inside this unit. Alright, so we just pulled this part off. Alright, doesn't do good on the uh, on the 690. I must have really leaned on it when we were down in Moab. Now we'll take this part off. It's like that Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoon. Bullwinkle is always saying, I didn't know my own strength. That comes right off there. Now here's the Sycra part. And this says it's the on the right. So we'll grab the other one that doesn't say anything. And um, here's we're going to need a wrench. So first of all, I'll just take these part off. And there's four of them. So Instead of just two, It's got this 13 millimeter bolt, which I'll put right there. Get these guys off. around my okay so it's right there you see now now there's more clearance around those cables I should be able to rotate the handle and that in that little cutout would uh, make it easier to see I suspect that because this is this side is all tightened I might have some problems getting this in but let's see if I can just do a straight swap on it Right about there. Now Ron had put these on his, and that's why we know that there was a difference. So this screwed right in. That, that's nice. I didn't have to move my metal bar yet for doing the swap. And, you know, these have a taper on them. 
and they match the taper on your handlebars. So you got to make sure you don't um, um, get those backwards. So. Um, Says T2 on both sides. As long as they're together, you're all right. Now, once we do this, the 500, of course, is going to be a wholly different experience than the 690. But when we get to the grip, we're going to have to. Um, the ends of the, the grip off. See if we've got uh, the same amount of space. You know, check the gaps here. Check the gap there. They're pretty close right now. And um, I'll go ahead and loosen the on the end of the handlebar over here. So, oops, that takes the five. I was wondering about this. Why does it not want to go down? Well, at least I can lift the handlebar up, I guess. There's something in the geometry of the uh, of this whole setup that forces us into exactly the right spot for some reason. I'm not too sure what that is. But let me snug this up. Again. over here. That seems to be holding down pretty good. All right, now we got more clearance and I can lower my um, lever down a little bit. So that's the uh, that's the left side. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the right. In case you want to stop looking now, um, before we get to the 500, you see there's a little expansion here. So when you tighten this bolt up, um, this thing goes up and makes a much bigger space. See that? How this gets, and that, and that pinches inside your, your bars. So the bars that we're dealing with right now, they're already inside the handlebar. We're good to go. Okay, so we've got that part done. I'll take these other pieces. 
I believe all the stuff was uh, designed by Enduro Engineering. Now the 500, you're going to be very careful. The uh, reason I'm saying that is that when you go to take this part out, you have to pull that bolt. This lever has springs inside of it and the whole thing explodes and there's a plunger and a spring that you're going to lose if you're not paying attention. So this is really critical. So, But before I do that, I'm just going to lightly mount these guys in the handlebars. And uh, again, I'm going to match up the, the bracket with the, uh, you see how it's got the taper? So the wide part of the taper obviously goes toward the root of the handlebar. And the cap, the wide, it also has a wide part. So we'll just get those started because I keep dropping things on the floor and I just don't want to lose them anymore. Okay, so now we're going to take this off. We're going to have to pull the bolt and let's see. And there's a little shroud on here that, um, that this stuff is attached to when we take this off. And in your, um, when you bought your bike, they got these little rubber shroud covers that are supposed to be used for the bark busters. Okay, so I got an 8 millimeter wrench. Now I'm going to very carefully, having done this once before, and knowing that exciting things are about to happen, the other thing is if you get the springs in the wrong way, they end up falling out again, and then you're spending another. I don't know, 20 bucks for a spring from KTM because you didn't get the right one. And somewhere on this garage floor there is a KTM spring and I just haven't found it yet. So I'm going to hold that really carefully. There's the nut. It's trying to come out. Alright, there's a little plunger. Hold it, hold it. See that spring? See that plunger? That's how it's supposed to go in. Spring first, and that little plunger tit, it sticks in there. You see it? Alright, make sure you don't lose that puppy. I'm going to move that right over here. Alright, so now this guy, it's held on by a little tie wrap. So, here's our little tie wrap cutter. Okay, so that's a part we'll put on eBay or something. Park that there. Now, the next question is, if we put the lever back on, well, I picked up the bag and I got Smelt some air from Germany or Austria. So there's got these bits are put in here. I'm not too sure which ones go where. But the bolt I pulled out is the same as that one. So maybe it, it doesn't need that little shoulder there. Or maybe it does. 
it seems to me so it goes down like that I don't know if that's the right one so obviously to go through here it's going to have to be probably this is the one that came out These are, this is the stuff that's in the set so I'm saying the only thing that can work is this guy here. All right, so let's pull this guy out here. Now very carefully I'm going to see the inner workings here. So that little pocket's going to go in there. The spring is like that. Shove that puppy in. I'm doing this one-handed while I'm holding the camera. So let's move this back out of the way. Slide this guy here. I love this whole the whole idea of hydraulic clutches and everything. Man, it's, it's really nice. Okay, everything's still connected. You can see the spring is there. And then I just need to put the nut on it. Now we're talking. I don't have my bifocals on, I apologize. Alright, that's well, really well cinched. Clutch is still working. That's a good sign. And then you got these little um, rubber shrouds. Okay, of these two shrouds, if you, if you look at them, you see this one kind of has a square part. This one's got a round on there. Um, so this is going to go on the other side. Well, maybe they're both the same. Just the reverse images. Anyway, this one goes over here like this. And um, I had to rotate my kill button and my horn button. This, this 500 has been made street legal by Elite Motorsports. And the um, reason I had to rotate them, normally they're up vertical like this, but when they're up like this, uh, Deacon, when he rides with me, he hits the paws on and he's hon honking the horn or shutting off the engine. So I have to rotate them fairly down um, to keep him from doing that. So get this shoved over here like that. And you see that little round part back here? This little strappy thing here is supposed to go up there. There you go, a little bit more. Okay, so now it's got a shroud on it. That's the first part. So I guess uh, KTM expects that you're not going to really be happy with their uh, marginal bark busters. But if you're planning on falling down a lot, I don't plan on falling down. I don't want to fall down. Then, uh, then that's the way you got to go. I don't know what these adjustments are. Okay, so now we're going to move over to this side. Now my neighbor, uh, Chris, he bought a, okay, there is a spring in there, so it's trying to come out too, so it's a good thing I'm holding on to it. And it doesn't have a, a little plunger. It just has a spring. Let's take a peek at it. See, there's a little pocket right here. 
right there is that little pocket and that spring goes in there's no little ball or plunger on this side so let's put this over here again I don't want to lose it just like that there's the bolt that it was on all right and here's this part um, again it's got a tie wrap on it that we need to cut off for the cables where is it I got two cables here I'm not too sure which one this looks like there's a black one it's going around the uh, there we go. Cool. Alright. Put that over here. Um, very fancy. Alright, so this side definitely has a different look. So it's got a... Here's to me, it's going to be this thing with a nut. Okay, so very carefully putting the spring in there. Hold that in like careful Mike. I need more hands. Put the spring in first, rotate it so it's in between the, and then, then while you're, drop that puppy in. Woo, we're good. Okay. Now that other nut that I was giving me fits on the left hand side. Looks like it's a slightly different size. It is. It's like a, I don't know, five millimeter bolt. The other one has a four millimeter thread. That's the problem when they got these KTMs are, um, yeah, and it figures. Um, no, can it really be a nine? No, that works. All right, so so evidently on this side, um, the handles you got eights over here. You got tens. So. Um, I'll hold that on with a universal metric, and it is a nylock nut, so theoretically it shouldn't come loose from vibration. Okay, still good. All right. Um, okay, so again, I think the holes on the bottom as it catches water. We'll slide this particular piece over here. Again, see that little groove right there? I think that's to to grab this little rubber boot. Stretch that over there. I wonder how many different models they have of these in KTM with all the different dirt bikes they've got and uh, variations. Now this is a 2015 by the way, or 2014 um, 500 XCW. All right, I've got that snapped over that little groove. That's over the bolt. And that, that all looks like it's supposed to be there now. Looks like it's doing pretty good mud great brakes on these things. Um, all right, so that's good for now. Next up, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut the, um, the, 
the rubber off the end to expose the handlebar because I need to get you need to get the edge far enough into the handlebar so it's it's not going to be rubbing on it. So I just need to figure out what I did with my knife. There we go. Hmm. Oh well. So, and also you notice that the I have to get the rubber off. You're also going to have to take out this little piece of plastic that's part of that. And um, an exacto knife is a little bit better. Okay, see I got my knife here. Cut that plastic off. Now since the clutch side doesn't move, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now we've got the um, the handlebar exposed. Um, And you probably do a cleaner job than I'm doing here. Now when you go to put the... You see where it says KTM power, port, power parts? If I put it over here, it's going to be upside down. Right? So it doesn't go here. So let's grab this other one, which again, made its way to the floor. Please refer to all KTM Power Parts packaging for very important safety and installation information for this. Alright, so when you put this in, you know, if the, unless there's a spacer here, you're gonna that's gonna be rubbing on here. So you have to you have to slide the throttle down a bit. And um, So I'm going to trim this off a little bit. And I have to run an errand for Becky. So we'll finish that up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen the two screws here. I'm going to loosen my uh, starter button, loosen the, um, the lever, the brake lever, slide it down about two millimeters to expose the end of this handlebar. And then, and then we'll mount that, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? All right. All right, same thing on this side. See how that looks? That means we'll be able to put this guy in there and uh, tighten it down. And it uses that five millimeter Allen just to start it. Uh, Start expanding it, and once I get it to a certain particular point, I'll just let it rest there because I got to come over here, take this bolt back out.
rotate this up in that position there. You kind of let everything seek its natural position before you tighten stuff. That one's in. Well, that one's. This guy down. Tighten this guy down. I see there's more room on the 500 for cables than there is on the 690. So this part's okay for that those bikes, these dirt bikes. Seems to be nice and strong. Nothing in the way. We'll do the other side the same way, but in the meantime, let's pull this out. Show you how that goes on. Try to position that there like that. Okay. So when you get these, there'll be four Phillips head screws. The reason the screws are already on here is because Ron put them together and mailed them out to me as I mailed out his black ones to him. So we probably spent more than we should have on these this whole process because we're shipping stuff back and forth in the mail. But I gave him a present of a Colorado OHV sticker. And he had to send me out a uh, um, gas tank for a DRZ. So let's put this right here. Okay, so what you're doing here is this little black clamp. So we're... Um, that into place. See if it'll stay there long enough. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, I probably should do is just get me a little helmet cam around my forehead. So I'll slide this guy around here like that until it matches the bend of the bar. Put the other brackets on the inside. So now if you want to put white ones or red ones or black ones, blue ones or pink ones in these deflectors, you can do that because they're all made by Enduro Engineering. And then um, you can do that. So there's uh, the left-hand side, all clamped up, rigid, way to go. And we'll work on the right-hand side next. All right, we are back. There's Deacon. He's a little worried about the thunder still. 
had a toad strangler earlier. We've got this mounted. Let's go on the this side and see what we need to do. Uh, we're going to need eight millimeters to move that down to Phillips head to slide my uh, mirror down. Now my dirt bike here, I've got uh, the Acherbis, um mirrors mounted down so you can see underneath your armpit, which is a better way to do uh, than trying to do over the top, otherwise it's too tall. But uh, on the 690, with the hydraulics and everything, there was no room to put a right side mirror. So um, maybe I'll adjust that. Alright, so I'm going to move this down this way. I want, to, I want to create some room. All right, so the the handlebar is sticking out just a little bit um, beyond the edge, but I got to move my start button. Let's see. Down. That's loose. This part. Okay. Slide that down a little bit. That worked out okay. Move that down a little bit. Now the throttle, let's see, what are we looking at there, is that another 8? Yep. So, here we go, that should be just enough. So I'll tighten that back down. Just sticking out there, we're okay. The start button. Let's uh, tighten him down. It's got a nut on the bottom, so we may need to use a pair of pliers or something. Oh, it's catching. All right, then bring the. Bring the brake lever back. I'm kind of eyeballing it. See if the uh, the flatness here lines up the flatness over there. Yeah, so they're all parallel. It looks pretty good. Oops. Okay, at least they're the same. All right, that throttle's not moving anywhere. Now when we put this guy on here, Pull that screw out, and line it up. Things have moved, so we're going to have to loosen this up. Well, I never loosened. I guess that was the other bike we were playing with, right? So we're going to have to slide this up, and I got a bunch of orange tie downs. Let's get rid of those. I don't know why I've got two of them. Orange is good, huh? Orange tie 
way down. Alright, let's see. So we're going to adjust that to get, looks like we got to go up, up the handlebar. Or a little camera. Yeah, looks like we're okay. All right, camera, stay. I'll go ahead and cut this to want the maximum amount of space so I can see what I'm doing. Maybe I need to put this. do it but it looks like it needs to go over there too all right with everything loose I should be able to get this in okay that's going in hand tight Always a good thing, especially since my uh, tool is now on the ground somewhere. Let's go get it. Oh dear. Yay. about the same over there. Now on, on, on this bike I'll um, I'll also be putting a different bolt in here to um, mount a camera mount. Let's get rid of this funky label here that tells me, warning, read the directions, otherwise you're going to die. That's all sticky. Use some WD-40 to take the adhesive off. It's like practically perfect there. Go. We now have mounted the KTM par parts um, bark busters on there, similar to what we did on the 690. Now notice, oh, but the last thing, uh, did I tighten this down yet? I think I did. 
Yep. All right. Uh, one thing you want to double check is take your throttle and see if it snaps back. Notice somebody's not snapping back. That's because I still had this little goober of plastic that I didn't cut off. Um, and so, it, and then we slid the entire throttle off, so that's hitting the, the side there. So I'm going to cut that off. And I'm throwing my knife. There you go. Back running. So don't forget to do that. Double check it. You don't want to go over your triple jump and find out your full throttle coming down. So the only difference, um, actually this brake needs to slide this way some. Um, but let me show you. Over here, you'll see in order to mount this mount, I just got an 8 millimeter uh, bolt that was about 20 millimeters longer than the screw that came with the uh, the brackets and still and was able to drill this mount for the camera and went through there to hold it on so that makes a really good place for the camera mount and I'll uh, I'll do the same thing I'll build a mount for this over here but for now I'd say this job is done so Deacon Deacon you want to say goodbye what do you think Deacon? Is that it? No more thunder? Alright.